And good afternoon. Welcome to LiveWire. I'm Clark Curtis with the College of Computing and Informatics. You'll soon find out our friends here are part of the North Carolina Science Festival. Joining me today, Jonathan Frederick, Director of the North Carolina Science Festival, and James Hathaway, UNC Charlotte's North Carolina Science Festival. He's on the planning committee. We're kind of like hip together here throughout <laughs> the uh, first part of the year every year. Um, Jonathan, start with you first. Uh, just a little background. How did the Science Festival get started as a statewide event? Sure. First of all, thank you for having me. I'm excited to have the uh, <laughs> Kelvin army invade the campus. His minions. Yeah. <laughs> These are his minions. So the festival started way back as an idea in the winter of 2009. Um, we're based out of UNC Chapel Hill's Moorhead Planetarium and Science Center. Um, and we wanted to do something to give back to the state, to get um, all parts of the state excited about science. So we, in September of 2010, launched the first ever North Carolina Science Festival and we reached out to our friends, basically folks on uh, university campuses, people at museums, science centers, schools, and we asked them to, to get involved. And it was an easy sell. We were surprised at the folks like Jim who were, who were willing, and you, who were willing to be like, okay, we'll give it a shot. Um, we were overwhelmed at the response. And here, five years later, um, we had over 300,000 people participate last year, something like... Uh, 700 events, so um, it's really grown and matured. The quality of the events has come up, and we've also had a lot more diverse happenings, something for everybody. And that's what I was going to ask. How has it, how, for you personally, how have you seen it grow from its infant stage to where it is now? Yeah, it's growing like a, like a weed. Um, actually, we have, um, with the Science Center uh, partnerships, a lot of things are pretty expected. You know, you do things at Science Centers where you, the places you normally go to have fun, and do hands-on science. Um, we really liked tapping into the universities and the fact that university leadership saw that this was a great way to get their top-notch researchers and graduate students out there to celebrate what happens on campus, campuses, that's really gotten us excited. Um, additionally, if we want to reach the next generation of uh, future science enthusiasts and science, scientists and engineers, we uh, thought we should do more in, in the K-12 sector. So we expanded all sorts of elementary school programming, middle school programming and high school programming. Programming, In fact, this t-shirt I'm wearing here is a, a t-shirt we give to our scientists who visit middle schools all across the state. Did you ever expect it to get this big when you started? Well, the funny thing is uh, my job is to get us to one million people participating by 2020. So if I'm doing my job right, um, we do want it to keep growing and just want to figure out how to not go insane, <laughs> how to keep it sustainable, how to give back to our partners who are doing such excellent things. Um, but to be honest, when we started this and we started with zero events, zero people showing up, five years later to have a goal of 400,000 people this year, we already have 800 events on the calendar for this year alone. No, I had no idea it would be this wildly popular and successful. And we're lucky, North Carolina has some incredibly um, rich and diverse experts who are eager to get out there and do things with the public. Now, I'm not going to make you mention all 800, but it just kind of give us a feel for what people can find around the state. Sure. One thing we wanted to do this year is uh, experiment with a the theme of science, of music, and sound. So we have some really interesting events with musicians. We have an uh, a urban STEM expert who started a rap label for high school uh, students who like to rap uh, science lyrics. He's going to come down and present as part of a hip-hop hackathon. Um, we have Pirate Science at ECU. They have the Queen Anne's Revenge um, Underwater Archaeology Laboratory on campus there, and they're going to do a whole thing about the science of pirates. Um, so there's just really a, a broad swath of really fun events. And it, give the dates to it. We'll go show the website at the end of the show, but the dates again for the entire festival. Sure. The, the, the public run of the festival is April 10th through the 26th. So in, what, nine days, eight days? We're almost there. Next Friday it starts. Right. And again, what, how many... You, it, it's in cities all over the state, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so our goal eventually is 100 counties. I think this year at last count we have public events in 84 of those 100 counties. We are legitimately, and it feels strange, it almost feels arrogant to claim, but it's, it's true, we are the largest, one of the largest, if not, depending on how you count, the largest celebrations of STEM in the world. Most people would think something in Beijing or, you know, Europe has a lot of fantastic festivals. But our North Carolina Science Festival, which is the first one of its kind in the country, is, is gigantic. And people across the country are looking at us to see how we're doing this. And I'm in PR. It's okay to lie. You can just <laughs> go ahead and say it's, <laughs> it's the largest, it's the largest, it's the largest in the ever. galaxy. There, there you go. <laughs> well, very good. And it's not just 
for kids. I mean, it's for all age, all age groups. Yeah, we say our, we defined our core audience as families, and what's great about that is that families are little children all the way up to retirees. So we try to have events that appeal to everyone, um, preschool events for for youngsters, up to um, intellectually rigorous talks that uh, maybe seniors and retirees would be very very into. Um, I know from, used, I used to work in environmental education and a lot of our master gardeners and botanists will be excited to hear that there's uh, the author of Wicked Plants uh, mm -hmm. is coming to the state to give a talk about botany and all the amazing plants that might be trying to kill us. Ah. <laughs> and that's going to appeal to that I'll audience. I'll put that on my calendar. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I think they're doing a cocktail hour afterwards with some of the plants, so it's going to be a fun, fun uh, meetup. A little bit of water parsnip for you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, Jim, you, you and I have been doing this for, what, four years now? Something yes, like that. I think so. I maybe think a century maybe or two. Maybe a century or two into yeah. that. But talk a little bit about how the university did first get involved with this. Well, you know, as Jonathan said, they got us involved in it. Um, we couldn't have done this, and you and I both know this story, um, without their help. Um, they came and said, come on, pony up, do your duty, and go and be part of this. And we said, well, sure, but we don't really quite know how to do it. So... You know, first year, they hired somebody, Mary Burris, who came in and sat with us week after week after week as we thrashed through, you know, what we might do. And we came up with doing an expo, which we'd never done before. Um, we all, all of us, I'm mean, like you, I'm in PR and have some experience in doing events, but doing a, a science festival is a different kind of thing. And you know, totally unknown territory. And Mary helped us through it, taught us how to do it. And every year has been a learning experience. We've changed and we've grown. Um, so we did it, we've done, we began with doing this expo, which honestly we had no idea was going to work. And we were incredibly surprised the first year. Not only did people come, but a lot of people came, even though our planning was somewhat haphazard, and we didn't really completely figure out what we were doing until about the ninth hour. Um, but we got it together, and we, we had something that was kind of fun with enough going on so that it would look like a university was presenting this. And people came, and they got excited, and they wrote letters to the chancellor, and they said, this is just wonderful. You have to keep doing it forever. And so we said, okay, you know, I mean, it works, and it was clearly there's a need to do. Um, what we have learned over the years, and I think what we're doing this year kind of shows it, is we've learned beyond just showing people things, what we need to do is engage with people. And again, they've taught us how to do this, um, because places like Moorhead have been doing this for a long time and really understand what science education is all about and what engaging the public is all about. And we've seen the point in all that and that if the public is engaged, they actually begin to see what we're doing as a university, what higher education is doing, what research is doing, what science and engineering and computer science and all our technological fields are doing and why these aren't just abstract things, how this connects with them. They come and they visit us, they see our people, they see what they're doing, they have fun, and that's a big part of it. It has to be fun, there, and it shouldn't be intimidating and frightening, which is the general feeling that we all know people have towards these disciplines. Um, and they're really not. I mean, they're great, they're cool, they're engaging, and we need to therefore engage. Well, I know that first year, too, uh, a lot of alum had came to the festival and the expo and stuff. And they hadn't been on campus for a long time. And they, one, they were amazed at how much more brick and mortar yeah. is here than when they were here, but just thanking us for doing it. Yeah. Yeah, they were, I mean, the appreciation, the community reaction to it was what sold everybody because the people, and this still happens every year, particularly at the Expo, is people will literally go from table to table and say, thank you for doing this. This is really wonderful. My kids are having this great time. Or... I'm here and I never knew you were doing this and I never knew you had this program. I didn't know you did this kind of thing. And this is really neat. I didn't know. And thank you. You know, and we get a lot of that. And it's, um, it's actually feels 
strange <laughs> to have people come and say that. And, and it's just simply that finding a way to make us approachable and make the disciplines approachable to people. Um, well, people love science events. I mean, it's, there's national data, and we work with an external evaluator that says just that, that people love science events. They particularly love them if they're hands-on, and they love them even more if they're experts there. And so to have the grad students at UNC Charlotte out there and the scientists leading these demos and having a good time and exploding balloons in front of crowds and getting people to jump and scream and shout, I mean, it, there's nothing better than that. It's just the perfect environment for, for engaging the public in science because the research is happening here and you just walk out into the front yard and say, yeah, right up there is my lab and this is what I do and this is why I do it. Um, particularly for publicly funded research, it's a nice way to, to say thank you and, and get people excited and on board with what you're doing. Another thing, Jim, talk a little bit about that we've tried to do is the first year was Expo and it was just primarily our folks here, but as, as it's grown, we're trying to get more folks from the community, schools, STEM schools, and those things involved with it as well. So we had two major things that we tried to consciously try and do, not exactly differently, but emphasize more this year, and one of which was to engage more, to really be a little more interactive rather than just present. Um, but the other one was is to find partners out in the community who would willingly be part of what we're doing um, and you know help do it help do events advise us on things do things and particularly in the expo this year we're doing a fair amount of that a good third of the expo are people from off campus um, we have you know major corporations like Westinghouse and so on but we also have the Raptor Center here this year we have um, um, we have a guy who's doing drones, who does drone photography, but he's willing to show people all about what drones are all about, which I think is going to be fun and cool. Yeah, that's, that's um, I'm, we're, I'm coming. <laughs> we're partnering with some of our local um, private and public high schools. Um, Charlotte Latin is coming and is going to um, demonstrate you know, some of the cool things that their kids are doing in the classroom, which are really, truly cool. Um, 3D printing, um, robots. Um, so part of what we're supposed to be doing, my sense is, as a public university, is being a supporter, a leader, a collaborator with the community. And this has given us an opportunity, now that we have our feet on the ground and we kind of know what we're doing, to say to people, hey, look, we're doing this stuff. I'm sure you have ideas, you have expertise we don't have. Come work with us and help us figure out how to do these things and how to engage the public. because." As we all know, you know, STEM and STEM disciplines are a kind of national public interest, and there are, it's not just universities that are interested in this. It's not just public schools that are interested in this. It's not just high-tech industries or pharmaceuticals that are interested. There's a broad swath of people out there who are partners and collaborators and um, you know, secret cell members, <laughs> you know, and working towards, you know, furthering, you know, the intellectual advancement of the country. What has been interesting is you and I solicit some folks from the outside. It's, you don't find too many people saying no. The only reason they're saying no is yeah. there's a conflict, basically. I mean, they've been yeah. very excited to join us. Yeah, the first couple of years, we, they came to us, and we didn't even go looking. They just found out through the grapevine, and then it dimly, as it often happens, began to occur to us, you know, if people are coming to us, maybe we ought to also be going to them and saying, hey, you know, we're doing this, you want to do it. And as soon as we did that, people said, oh, yeah, <laughs> you know, we want to come and be part of it. You're going to have a bunch of people out. You're going to have your people. We like your people. Um, we want to show off what we're doing, too. So, sure. Well, and you had mentioned that it's grown over the years, and I know the answer to the question, but I'm going to yeah, ask you. Yeah. Just how has it? How have you seen this thing grow since we first started? Yeah. Well, we started by just doing the expo. Um, and after doing that for a year, um, we began realizing that that was primarily a, a thing that is aimed at families and whatnot, but that we also had some really interested adults out there mm -hmm. um, who were who came to the expo and were having a good time, but maybe we ought to also do some adult events. So we started doing lectures. Um, and we did, we did 
a small group of lectures the second year, and those were reasonably, reasonably successful. People came to see them, um, even though the topics were often somewhat obscure, but they were all designed for the general public. Um, and then last year, we said, you know, if we're doing that kind of thing, why don't we do films? And do those as a kind of panel format. Um, so we did lectures and films. And this year, we've expanded that, and we've realized that the lectures, while good and interesting, have limited um, audience appeal. I mean, if you're doing a lecture on oh, um, ecology and agriculture, you're going to get a few people out there who are interested in that topic, but it's kind of obscure for a lot of people. So what we've start now done is transformed our lectures into panels, and we've let faculty suggest topics, and they've come up with some hot-button topics Great that they're expert yeah. on. Um, we're calling it science and society. So there are things that people are concerned with, have questions about, have issues about, get a bunch of people together to talk about them, um, maybe argue a little bit about them, and then let the audience interact with them and do that. So those are all designed for adults. Um, the films are somewhere in between. Um, and, and kids, of course, are welcome into all of these things. But um, And then we have a bunch of engagement events that are um, more designed to be engagement events um, for kids. Um, and the expo is, is, of course, everything. Sure. Um, and some of them are booked up already, which yeah, is a yeah. tribute. So it's testament to the quality of the events. The yeah. registrations are already filling up. Yeah, I think, I think we could probably license doing, doing robotic workshops and... <laughs> if, if ever, Kelvin's if, excited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kelvin is very excited, and he's you going to tell. be teaching these workshops. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, there was a method to the madness of that yeah. question because that leads me right into what I want to ask. Just kind of go through some of the lead-up events, and then we'll talk about the expo okay. specifically. Okay. So the films we're doing this year. Um, last year we did some popular films. This year we're going to do documentaries, but documentaries that are have gotten a certain amount of attention. Um, we're doing one on um, the hunt for the Higgs boson, which is called Particle Fever, which has won a bunch of awards that people are excited about, and the hunt for the God particle, right? Um, and this enormous project over in Europe where they've, under 18 miles of mountain, have built this enormous cyclotron, atom smasher, um, in order to figure out how the universe works. Um, it's a seemingly obscure topic, but it's something that actually everybody has heard about because so much has been invested in it and because they apparently were semi-successful in finding the Higgs People boson. People were worried they were going to turn, uh, start black holes when they first yeah. fired up the yeah. LHC. I asked a physicist about that and I was like, it's kind of ridiculous. People think they're going to, uh, a giant black holes going to follow the Earth. And he's like, well, very tiny black holes that will yeah. be created, but they only exist for like a nanosecond. Yeah. Which, Made me a little nervous, but yeah. it's worked. It's well, worked out I mean, so there far. were there were serious <laughs> physicists at that saying, you know, there is a possibility, not a high percentage possibility. <laughs> it could but there is a possibility that the entire universe could be sucked into this. <laughs> and it's like, okay, <laughs> is this a good idea? Um, but you know, Your all science will not save you. <laughs> yeah, that's right. right. All science involves risk. Um, so we're doing that one. Um, we're also doing a film. A, it involves climate change, but hits near to home here called Shored Up, which has been controversial because it alarms some people when we talk about sea level rise, um, which affects insurance and property values and so on. But it's a very well done, very scientifically thorough film. Um, so those are the two films we're doing. We have panels with each of those of, of really expert people who really know their stuff and we welcome people who want to come in and ask tough questions. And um, again, the idea is, is to engage the community. And if these topics are, are controversial, then there are things that people want to talk about. Um, so that's what we're doing in films. The panels, we're doing um, three panels. We're doing one on basically big data and data analysis um, and where that's all going. Um, the topic is interesting. Again, potentially a little frightening. Are robots going to take over? Are artificial intelligences likely to take over the world? That's one possible 
part of that topic. You know, are we going to be dealing with Skynet this year? <laughs> um, <laughs> I hope not. Um, they don't seem to think so, but there are also really exciting possibilities in that. And we have one of, here on campus, have one of the best group of um, big data people who are looking at those issues anywhere. Um, is that the April 13th? Event? That's the April 13th event. That's April 13th here on campus at, in the Epic Building. These are all evening events, by the way. So they're designed so that people don't have to try and come to campus while um, everybody is, all the students are here and they can't find parking. There will be parking. They will be easy to get here. Um, and they're at 7 o'clock, so people have time to go home, grab dinner, and then come sure. here. Um, on the 15th, we have a panel on GMOs, um, which is, again is a topic that everybody is concerned about. Um, Everyone like has an opinion. Everybody, I don't know if it's always yeah. an informed opinion. Yeah. And that's the, the rub, right? Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. it's the, everybody has a real fear with this. Um, the European Union, a few, a few years ago, called these things frankenfoods and banned them. And yet people in the sciences say, well, you know, that may not be quite, you know, accurate and that may be alarmist. And they point out, you know, that it's been going on actually since humans have been domesticating plants and animals. Um, there's a whole lot to it, pro and con. We have a couple of our premier biotechnologists, um, both biologists here, Ken Piller and Ken Bost, who have actually have a company where they're um, manipulating soybean plants to produce um, medicines usable for humans and for um, animals. Um, and they'll be here to talk about what's real and what's not in this. Um, we have finally, and this is again a topic that's timely and that everybody's concerned with, um, we have a panel of people from our Health and Human Services College who've done some work on this, um, both in their research and in public engagement, um, talking about concussions in sports. Um, because this is something that certainly everybody who has a child in, involved in athletic activity has thought about a little bit and may not quite understand what the risks are or are not and what things they ought to be doing and not doing and so on. Um, and it's a debate, and these are people who are there to lend some expert opinion but can also listen to people, and it's an ongoing discussion. Um, so that's on April 21st. Um, we, in terms of our single events, we have a bunch of these that are, um, there are things that people basically come and see, but on the other end, don't entirely interact with, but that are a little different. Um, we have an exhibition going on down at our Center City building at the Projective Eye Gallery. That's really the second year in a third in a three-year series of environmental art exhibits. Um, this year they're looking at creeks and water, and they're particularly appropriate in Charlotte since we're full of creeks. And the exhibit is called Keeping Watch, City of Creeks. Um, and they've got some fascinating stuff, both artwork and, you know, really interesting environmental materials about what's going on with water ecology and urban water and how that's all working. Um, we have, um, that's coming out of our College of Arts and Architecture, who is a new partner this year. You wouldn't think of an arts college as being part of a science festival, but they actually were really, really interested in being part of this. They want to be multidisciplinary. Um, so they're also doing um, a, a concert with a percussionist who's prepared to talk about the science of, of how modern music works, particularly using digital stuff and all this. And it's, that's sort of engaging. It'll be one of these things where we'll bring an audience in, he'll give a concert, and he'll talk about what he's doing. Um, and that's on April 24th. Um, the gallery show, by the way, is ongoing. It's actually open now, and it's going to be going right through, the, through our entire festival. Um, we also have a very popular event that 
um, we've been doing every year thanks to the Moorhead, which suggested this idea. Um, it's from the beginning of doing... You made him an offer, couldn't you? Yeah. yeah. This is a star party um, yes, yes, that yeah, our, yeah. Our, our university observatory is part of. And, and this, again, is something that if we could bottle it, we could make, you know, we could be Bill Gates. And, and because people, What's unbelievable bottle? numbers of people <laughs> want to come out. And that's already oversubscribed. Um, but it's a nice thing to be popular. Um, yeah, that's the last weekend of the festival, right leading right. into the... Um, the expo, the right. star party. We have 40 sites all over the state oh, wow. on the Friday and Saturday of the last weekend, the 24th and 25th. Weather and permitting. Weather, it's always <laughs> always a risk with yeah. the star parties, but uh, they're going to be great. Yeah, and they always have been. I mean, we've I've been to each one of the ones we've done, and it's really fun. People come out and they hang out on a lawn and look in telescopes and have people show them things and talk to things, and the kids are engaged and. If you do, if you have never done astronomy, mm -hmm. you know it's really worth getting. And you, particularly if you have children, it's one of the most wonderful things to get people engaged because they look out there and they see stuff and they go, "Is that real?" Yeah. You know, yeah, really, absolutely. you can see a galaxy. Yeah. You, know, you can go, you can see a nebula. Um, so that's really cool. That's April twenty fourth at dusk, um, and then we have all our various engagement events. Um, one of which is an event that actually we've been doing since forever, but and we've always had it be open to the public, but we've ne really never publicized it before. And that's our graduate research symposium, which is on April 11th, the second day of the festival. Um, and this is an event that we've been thinking about for a while about doing. Um, in order to make it engaging, we needed to work a little bit with the graduate students who present this. They're presenting, graduate students are, are researchers at the very beginning of their career. Right. Um, and, you know, they're usually so focused on being researchers that they aren't necessarily thinking about how to possibly make this meaningful um, to people who aren't in their field. Um, but this is a great opportunity for them because people will be coming and listening to them talk. They're prepared for that. They're going to, um, I don't promise it'll all be totally understandable, but they're there to answer questions and to talk about things they're doing. And if you're curious what kind of research goes on at a, at a research university, it's a great introduction to that because there's, it's the whole gamut of all the stuff that we do. And you'll see strange, cool, sometimes completely incomprehensible projects but it shows you what really happens at a university. And I'm getting, we've only got a couple of minutes left, okay. so I, I want, and we'll show people where they can go to look right. at the, the additional things, but I want you to talk a little bit about the expo, and we're going to sure. show some pictures from last year yeah. just to give folks a feel yeah. for... Yeah. Well, I'll just quickly mention a couple of things that, that are already full that we can't, so nobody can who hasn't already signed up to come to can come to, but we're doing a computer programming workshop for girls. Um, we're doing um, a robotics workshop in using Legos, Lego robotics. Um, those have been wildly popular. Next year we will try and do much more of this. Um, and we have a tour of a design studio where people are doing things with designing interactive software for manipulating your home appliances. Um, but then there is the expo, which concludes everything, which is on April 26th from noon to 4 o'clock. I was going to say to 2, because we've right. always done it from 10 to 2, but it's not. We're moving it back this year so people who have church duties in the morning can still get yeah. to it. Yeah. Um, and that's going to be, that's as it always is, huge and bigger and bigger every year. Um, and we'll have robotics, lots of robotics at that, um, but also biology, environmental science, chemistry, Things going boom, as yes, you pointed the out. Scientists. <laughs> All yeah, kinds of on. wild and crazy. Things don't try at home. Yeah. And so it's it's a wonderful fair. Um, it really has something for everybody. Right. It's become this sort of our, oh, sorry, our mad ahead. scientist right yeah, here. So there he is, burning himself. Yeah, th yes. Don't try this at home yeah. either. So. Well, the first time I came, and this has rapidly become the grand finale for the statewide celebration because it's always on the last Sunday. And um, UNC Charlotte has done it 
an incredible job, but pretty much the model for how we want a university to participate in these types of celebrations. It's, it's absolutely amazing. But when I first showed up, I just heard this boom and like felt it. And I had no, I was like, what is going on at this event? And turned a corner and there was an audience sitting outside and that chemist was doing sure. an incredible show for everyone. So it's a good time. The check was good that we gave you, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. So, that's right. Right. Anyway. Don't cash it right <laughs> away. Yeah. I mean it. I, it's, <laughs> this, this sheet of all the events happening right here on campus, it's absolutely incredible. You asked at the top, would we envision these things? If you would have told me five years ago that this would be happening at a leading university, I would have retired. I mean, that's just absolutely fantastic and such a cool offering for the general public to be able I to see. Appreciate that. So if anybody wants some additional information, you can go to nccsciencefestival.org, and that will give you a listing of all the events going on around the state. And if you're interested with schedules and what's happening right here at the university, nccsciencefestival.uncc.edu. Gentlemen. Thank you, as always. Thanks, Jim. Thank you, Clark. All right. Thank you for joining us, and have a great rest of your day.